chapter of days. Thank you. I thank you, Father, for this great opportunity. I thank you, Lord, because you're going to showcase yourself today again. Father, I pray that I do not share your glory with you. Let people see you through this discussion tonight. Let people see you through our prayers tonight. Let me be minimized, O oh God. It's my earnest desire, O oh Lord, that the scripture, what you have promised us, will become flesh in our lives, in our financial lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we're still in the month of wisdom for financial empowerment. So my discussion had been based on wisdom for financial empowerment. I know whenever we talk about financial, um, especially in the church, we, we read the Bible, we read the Bible, we quote the Bible, we read the Bible, we quote the Bible, we read and quote. But we don't see physical manifestation. It's a big concern to me. And I say it should be a big concern to all of us. It's actually getting better. Because I remember growing up. When, as a woman, when they say a pastor is coming to marry you. You go to the backyard and start to cry. Every lady that grew up, I'm talking about like late, like my when my mother, when they were little. Why is that? Because they associate the work of God with poverty. It should, now it's changed. And I'm just, I just give God all the glory. That is no longer like that. It's no more like that. The, the men of God, the women of God are showcasing the beauty, the glory of God. And I just want to thank God for that and hope that it will continue to increase and progress and the beauty of God we showcase in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. I would like to... Um, bring up my work um, I believe I have the facility to share so I would like to do a recap first of all um, wisdom for financial prosperity wisdom for financial prosperity i want to show us what anytime you're planning for finances in the in the real world of financial planning those these are the six areas that that you focus on you can see that the lowest level is cash flow management, cash flow. Then you have the risk management, investment planning, tax planning, retirement planning, and estate planning. So most of these things are the things we don't touch on or the things we don't consider when we talk about finance. When we're looking at finance, we stay on this zone, cash flow. And ever since we've been doing this teaching, we've been, you know, round, going around this, this uh, cash flow management. So everything we've been talking about is about cash flow. So today I'm going to, you know, wrap around the same cash flow again. Uh, maybe next time if we have the opportunity, then I'm going to discuss how we can tidy up the remaining five inside your cash flow management. How you can tidy up these five inside your income from employer. 
the work that you're doing right now, the job you're doing, how you can factor the rest. Because I don't see, especially believers, I don't see us going to see specialists. Oh, today we're going to talk about my estate. Oh, I want us to plan for my death. Oh, I want us to plan for what, what, how do I plan, what do I plan for my death? I did a presentation last week. And I thought I, one of the topics I discussed was given through a state, through death. Uh, you could see that it felt like a pin was dropped. It felt like a pin was dropped. And I challenged all the lawyers in the team to take it up with them. Because these are the area people don't want to talk about. They're, they're all part of your finances, praise the Lord. So, when... One uh, scripture that I, I like so much is when um, Elisha picked up the cloak of Elijah, right? And he has picked up the cloak and then he went back to River Jordan. Remember they crossed the Jordan before Elijah came, came on and struck the River Jordan. They crossed. So Elisha saw that they crossed. They were able to cross the river. But then he, he collected the cloak. He collected the mantle. By then, Elijah have been taken up, right? Elisha came to River Jordan. He said he stood on the bank of the Jordan. He just stood there. He stood. He stood. Some, if you read other versions, you could see that he, he was contemplating. Oh, what happened now? Nah. Oh, Elijah is no longer here. How do I cross this river? And then, of course, he remembered, I have the mantle of Elijah. He struck the water, and then the water parted, divided, and then he crossed. This is you and I in most cases. Most of the time, we are still waiting for God to answer the prayer while God is waiting for us to take action, especially in our finances. I want to remind us of the things that we, we, we touched on um, last week. Or was it last two weeks? We talked about hindrance for financial prosperity. We said the biggest one is mindset. So we dealt with mindset the last time. We dealt with mindset. Then we went into knowledge. We, we touched knowledge a little bit. So today I'm going to finish up knowledge. And then the third one is depth in the spiritual realm. Spiritual in depthness, which I, I think I touched a little bit on it. Those are hindrance to financial prosperity. Because if we don't know what is hindering us to actualize that which God wants us to have, you might be working for nothing. You might be striving for nothing. I just want us to do a little quiz here. If I have 1,000, if my account in a bank is negative 1,000, my account in the bank is negative. So that means I am in the red by 1,000. And then somebody gave me $1,000. So I deposited that 1,000 in my account. How much would I get? I will get zero. So my the balance of my account will be zero. Right? Even though I deposited 1,000. But because it's already in the negative, the balance of my account will be zero. So this is what spiritual indebtedness does to our finances. And I want to reference this scripture again, Matthew 17, 24. You remember the payment of the temple tax? He said on their arrival in Capernaum, um, so, so they came to ask him questions concerning uh, taxes. They came to Peter and asked, doesn't your teacher, that's your master, pay the temple tax? 
does he not pay the temple tax the temple tax remember they didn't go to jesus they came to somebody else to ask that's what happens when you're in debt people will talk on your back people will ask another person about you they won't come to your face verse 25 says yes he does peter replied then he went into the house but before he had a chance to speak jesus asked him what do you think peter do kings tax their own people or the people they have conquered and peter of course responded they tax the people they have conquered peter replied jesus said well then the citizens are free the citizens are free <laughs> However, 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 even though we're free, however, we don't want to offend them. We don't want to offend them. What does that mean? We don't want them to take it, to hold it against us. We don't want them. This is like encumbrance, financial encumbrance. We don't want them to hold it against us. So go down to the lake. Throw a line, open the mouth of the first fish you catch, and you will find a large coin. You know, Jesus could have said, snap his finger and the coin will be there. He would have said, let there be coin and the coin will be there. But he said, go down to the lake. Throw a line. This is action, action, action. And then you will see the coin. He said, take it and pay the tax for both myself and for you. Pay. He didn't want to pay just for himself. He wants to also pay for myself and for you. As I was meditating over this, I said, why? They didn't talk about Peter. They didn't ask Peter about anything about tax. And what I received was that Jesus wanted to took take care of indebtedness by association because this is this is one of the biggest area of our finances indebtedness by association the association can be from the family you came from it can be the person you married it can be the friends you you you're commingling with it can even be the company you work for it can be the company you work for. Praise the Lord. That when we understand all these things, that will help us to know how to target our prayers and how to recognize when there are evidence of financial indebtedness. How much do you know about this company you're working for? Tell me how much you know about this company. That land where the company is situated, how did they acquire that land? What do you really know about it? Was there a court case and they maneuvered it and took it for somebody because they're in authority? We don't know. We don't know. So Jesus said, get this money, pay mine, pay yours as well. I don't want you to be, I don't want you to commingle your indebtedness with me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Am I going backwards or what? Yes. Let's see some of the examples of debt that creates spiritual debt. Tax evasion. Do you know that tax evasion is a crime in Canada? I, um, I file my taxes. To God be all the glory. I owed just a little. <laughs> I owed just a little. It was it was so little, I could have just written a check and paid it off. And then the accountant said, Oh, you can just wait until you get your you get your your notice of assessment. And then I got my paper, I forgot to pay it. Do you know that that little thing I forgot to pay, even though it's so little, it's actually less than $50. That little thing can put me into big trouble, according to the law of Canada. Tax evasion, there are, there, 
tax evasion is another topic that could take a day to complete. What tax evasion is? Like manipulating tax. Government have provided different areas that we can use to plan taxes. It's so huge that if you use if you if you use it, you don't need to evade taxes. The next one is theft. Theft. You know, when I say theft, don't think about taking a gun, going to somebody's house, or you break the door, you go in, you carry television, you do this. There's so much thing called theft. Taking something that does not, you might even be stealing from your husband's pocket. I'm talking to us right now. <laughs> we might even be stealing, doing several little stealing but the biggest ones are stealing that affects somebody else's life stealing that affects other person's life you know how that stealing affects the person and the person goes on their knees and make declaration against this person that becomes a debt for you in the spiritual realm deception is a big one deception and then I want to I want to throw this one, and especially for for all of us that came from Africa, owing marital obligations, marital obligations. I know when we are born again, we say, "Oh, I, I am born again. All things have become new." But when you were marrying, you were not marrying. The people that gave your wife to you are not entirely men of god most of the time these are elders of the villages those are elders that are using the law they're using the law of the of the of their their clan or the law of whatever you are married to to decide what the marital obligation will be some of us have married and got children without satisfying this marital obligation this is Spiritual indebtedness. Praise the Lord. I want to, I want to, defrauding is a big one. Defrauding has so many areas. You can defraud the bank. You can defraud the bank. You can defraud the government. Defrauding widows. We see this a lot. We see this a lot. Where widows, because their husband passed away, or even widowers, they can be widowers can be defrauded too. You see that the the person the, the, the person who is the head of the family is no longer there. People start encroaching into their land. People start encroaching into their property. Some brothers and sisters of the husband will come to to take claim ownership of the property and defraud the widow. That is huge spiritual indebtedness. Defrauding orphans. Defrauding companies. I give example of how companies can be defrauded. Are you defrauding the, defrauding the company with the time you spend? Every day you go to work eight hours, you work for only three hours. <laughs> you actually owe five hours every day. You owe that. Most of these things I'm talking is not because I read it somewhere. No, this is what I got by revelation. By revelation, I saw a company and I saw the strong man would dive into the company and dive out. And I'm like, what is going on? And when he goes into the company, he grabs stuff and then he's hiding under the pillars. And I deliberated on this. I asked Holy Spirit, tell me, explain to me what is going on. And then he's trying to explain that these are debts. These are things you will leave in the company. In debtness, he's collecting, he's collecting, he's collecting, he's collecting things to use as evidence. Evidence, evidence. I'm writing more on that because it's huge what I received about that. Defrauding friends and families. Defrauding the church. 
There are so many of them. These are just some examples. Those are just some examples of defrauding, defrauding, defrauding. Praise the Lord. I pray that God will open our eyes to see. I pray that God will open our eyes to see where we are defrauding. Father, open our eyes to see. Praise the Lord. I want to read Deuteronomy 8.18. He said, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. You notice I underlined power and I underlined get. That he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. Power to get. Power to get. Praise the Lord. When I talk about power to get, I want us to borrow some knowledge from physics. Some people will say physics in a Bible class. Yeah. I'm beginning to see that if you are a child of God and you are not able to use things in this world to explain the Bible, go to Holy Spirit and ask them to teach you more. If you are a child of God, Everything in this world, the Bible, you, you go, if God begins to reveal to you, then you see that you can use physics to teach Bible. In the last week, God showed me ma a math concept, a mathematics concept that explained how prayers are answered. I was so excited. I was so excited. I'm like, I said, I started to write. I started to write. That that one blew my mind. So, yes, we're going to borrow from physics. Power. The amount of energy transferred or converted by unit of time. The amount of energy. So, it is the rate at which work. When somebody say work. It is the rate of time at which work. Is done upon an object. So power is a time-based, time-based quantity. It is related to how fast a job is done. Can somebody say time? Time. So power, by, by definition in physics, is work divided by time. Work divided by time. When we, if you remember, any of you that have done elementary school math, work is the numerator, time is the denominator. So time is at the bottom. If you're doing division, two divided by three, three is at the bottom, right? So work is the numerator, time is the denominator, right? So if time gets smaller, this, if, if the de denominator gets small and small and small, that means your answer will be big and big and big. Pick up a calculator and do 10 divided by 0 0.00005. Try that and see what you get. Huge number. And then say 10 divided by 0 0.00005. The more you reduce the denominator, the more your answer gets big. So, how can we maximize power? We say power is work divided by time. How can we maximize power if we minimize time? The shorter the time, the greater the power. You can either in minimize time or you increase work. The numerator, you can, there are two things you can do to increase the answer of a fraction. The two things you can do to increase the answer to a fraction is to minimize the denominator or increase the numerator. 
You either increase the work, which is the numerator, or you reduce the time. Do you know that is why the enemy attacks time? That's what the Holy Spirit told me when I was preparing this. He said that is why the enemy wastes time. The enemy is time. He said the years that the canker worm, the years, he didn't say the fruit. The canker worm didn't eat fruit. The canker worm didn't eat produce. The canker worm ate years. Hey. And I said, why? He said, because that time is what needs to be minimized for that power, power to get wealth, to be maximized. So work is the energy transferred. I'm going straight back to work again. Energy transferred to or from an object through the application of force. Can somebody say force? <laughs> through the application of force along a displacement. Ah, if Pastor B is here, he will, he will pick on this displacement. So work is force time displacement. W is for work, F is for force, D is for displacement. So power, I want you to imagine your house where you are right now. And this is your power. This is your power. Your pa the same source of power for the house is flowing through the connection, powering your fridge, is powering your television, is powering the light bulbs, is powering the washer and, uh, and dryer, it's powering the stove, powering the heater, powering the lawnmower if you want to do the lawn, powering the hot water tank, powering all the things. The same source of power in the house. There are not two. So, if you refuse to plug in the fridge, if you did not even buy the fridge, or you did not plug the fridge, Will that power flow through the fridge? No. The fridge will not be cold. If you did not buy washer and dryer, you didn't, you didn't even get it. Will the power flow to washer and dryer? No, because it's not there. If you didn't plug it in, no, it will not be there. This is what God has provided for us. Through his power, Power to get, power to get. The fridge gets the power. The TV gets his own. The light bulb gets their own. The washer and dryer gets their own. The stove gets their own. They all get, they all get their own. If you remember when I talked a little bit about channels of income, any believer that creates channels, you are actually tapping on the source because God has given us the power. Every believer already has that. All we need to do is to apply that definition of power. Work with minimal time. Work. There has to be work. There has to be work. I'm not saying that there's no provision for favor. I'm not saying that there's no provision for divine intervention i'm not saying there's no provision for gifts all those things no there are provisions for that but i'm not talking about when, when we talk about wealth we're not talking about manner that's not what i'm talking about i'm not talking about manner i'm talking about sustainable wealth building sustainable wealth yeah somebody can give you 20 dollars tomorrow somebody can give you 500 dollars. what do you do with it it's those ones are called this discretionary funds for discretionary expenditures. They are not for wealth creation. So let's have this in mind that you have to be intentional. We have to be intentional in plugging to that power. We have to be intentional so, I want you to think right now, what have you plugged 
in that power to get wealth personally as a as an individual in this in this loop right here what did you plug in that power maybe you 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 have employment that's great that's it one what else the power has the capacity you see the arrows the power has the capacity to keep going and keep powering the all these things they keep powering as a child of god we have been promised that the power has the capacity to do that now when you go home ask yourself what did i plug in to that power I know somebody will say, oh, it's only me. I don't have, just that's the way I feel personally. I feel like, no, I don't, I really don't have energy for all these things. Yes. But anytime we have an opportunity, I'm going to show you how you can use that one employment. You have employment, you have, you have just your job. That's all you want. That's all you want to focus on. Yes, that's okay. But you can still use that job to create all this all this channel that you can plug into the power and god will power all of them praise the lord hallelujah we have so much reason to be grateful to this almighty god we just have to understand him and understand that we are not of this the economy of this world we are not of the economy of this world in the in the in the king in the kingdom of God, I want us to understand that kingdom. We are in Canada, but we are of the kingdom of God. Just like your passport, your Canadian passport will determine some of the rights that you have. You cannot take your Canadian passport and go and claim German rights. So our what we can claim is the power that the Lord has given to us, the power that is able to multiply, the power that is able to increase. So now we know where our prayer should be. That prayer about canker worm eating your time is a huge prayer. It's a, it's a, it's a huge prayer. Sometimes people wonder, oh, eating my... How do they try to imagine eat time? <laughs> the devil understands all that. The devil understands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we're still on maximizing power. We said you can maximize power by increasing force because this is the definition, right? Work, we said, we gave two definitions. That power is work divided by time. And now we are defining force, I mean work, as force times displacement force what kind of force as believers intensifying your prayer adding prayer that is the force that is the only force believers have force so knowledge the fact that you have been given the power oh he gave me the power he didn't say power to receive wealth mm -mm. If, if that is the case, he would have asked Peter, oh, take the coin. I'm giving you the coin. Take. He said, you go to the river. Go to the river. Do some work and you will get. You will get. There's so Even when Jesus turned water to wine, he said, go. they did something. I, I want you to begin to see how in the Bible, God always wants people to do something. Do first. Do and create, create a place for the for the power to flow through. Hallelujah. I know we can um something I want to I want us to do. It. I want to go back to this. Um, I'm looking at the time. We don't have much time. But I talked about everything we're talking about today is just based on cash flow. 
everything we've been talking about for all those times have been based on cash flow. But I said, all these ones can also be taken care of because people are wondering, oh, there's so much to do. By the time you finish work, come back, do ministry, you're tired, you don't have much time to even focus on all the other ones. But I said, all these ones can be factored through your company benefits. The question now is, what are your company benefits? I really want everybody to ask themselves that question. When you go to work, if I ask you to write what your benefits are, how many things can you identify as your benefits? A lot of us didn't even ask that question when they were being interviewed. When we were being interviewed, all we asked was, how much would you pay me? How much per hour? That's all we ask. So you only ask for one benefit. <laughs> you only ask for one benefit. There's so many benefits. There's so many benefits. So when I had that revelation, when I saw the strong man, he dived into the company. He dived out, carrying stuff, hiding on the pillar. And I said, what is that? Holy Spirit said, when people lose their job, it, it was like I was in a school being tutored. He said, when people lose their job, they think they have lost that income. Maybe they used to get 2000 a month. They think in their mind that they have lost that 2000 He said it's beyond that. He said when the enemy causes you to lose your job, it's because they want to collect all the other benefits that should have accrued. So if you are age 30 today, and you're supposed to have been working and making that 2000 from age 30 to age 65, so if you left that company, if you lose that job, I want you to take your calculator later on and, and project that 2000, project with cost of inflation as well, and go to age 65 and see how much the enemy is collecting. That's what the Holy Spirit was telling me. That they're collecting what should have. He said, because God, he said, the way the company benefits are is the way that God releases benefits to us in the spiritual realm. God releases benefits to us. So those benefits that have been released to us, you have to create avenues to, to power them on. So risk management, investment planning, tax planning, everything through your company benefits. We will not have time to go to that. But I want us to see what are some of the benefits that employer can do. Employers benefits, they are designed to supplement individual health insurance. Not just health insurance and every other insurance benefits, every other benefits. It is one of the best ways that they design to attract talented employees to a company. This is this is either in North America or different parts of the world. They have different benefits. Actually, Nigeria has fantastic benefits that a lot of people, a lot of them have stock options, big ones. Go and ask people that work in the shell. A lot of them have so many benefits, but they didn't use it to create channels. They were collecting it as cash. So examples are retirement plans. I really want us to check this. Either, especially if you have stayed one year in that company, if you have stayed one year and you're full-time or even regular part-time, you're regular, check, are you part of the benefits? You can ask. The best way to know if you're part of these benefits is to look at your T4 and see what and what is there. Health plans, some people will say, oh, Canada, we have health plans in Canada. Yeah, in Manitoba, the moment you go to 
Ontario, the health benefit of Manitoba does not carry you in Ontario. I don't know if you know that. The Manitoba health benefit does not sponsor you in Newfoundland. If you step, it's, that's why it's called Manitoba. Manitoba health card. It specified Manitoba. The moment you step out of the country, it becomes out of country. Out of country. So, employers know about that. They provide you with this extended health that will take you anywhere you go around the world. What am I, what am I talking about here? Risk management. So, risk management to your company. What am I talking here? Retirement plan through your company. We have dental vision plans. We have life insurance plans. Not just life insurance, but even, even um, there are insurance that is paid when you have an illness, but you survive that illness. That means that is the insurance that you enjoy. Your life insurance is for your beneficiary to enjoy. Okay? It's called critical illness insurance. I know some people are saying, oh, as believers, we can't get sick. Oh, yeah, I know. But we have seen believers who die. We have seen believers who are sick. We have seen that. Time has passed when, when, when our parents will die and we carry debt. We take loans. Time has passed. If anything happened to a believer right now, your, your family should be blessed. Your children should be blessed. The church should be blessed. Because the church you... Anytime we have time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that because Holy Spirit wants me to talk about that. How you can use your estate to fund the church, the work of God. And that is why here in Canada, when you go to those big churches, it's huge. You only see 15 people there. All 15 people with, with I don't want to talk too much, I'm on the line. You only see a few people there. And then you begin to wonder, how do they pay for this big building? The hydro alone in that building could buy, could buy the whole street. How do they pay? If somebody tells you, what they receive from a state, from members. If those are those are hidden truths that nobody will come out and, and verbalize. So a state is huge, and all these things to the company are so cheap. I know you can also do it outside the company. Yes, you should actually have both, but to the company is so cheap. You will be surprised to see how much goes out of your account for all these things might be like $25 for everything. And then you begin to wonder, even if you leave the company, this is not living, this is with you. This is with you. It, it doesn't move. All the, the, a lot of us don't use the dental, life insurance plan, disability. Disability doesn't mean you're going to go on crutches. You're going to go on wheelchair. Uh -uh. If you're sick beyond three months, disability can kick in. Praise the Lord. So there are so many because of time, so many things. Any other time I have um, time, I'll go over. This is what you're supposed to see in the company. This is what the company will show you. For any of you that have this, it says option one, option two, option three, option four, option five, and it, it breaks it down for you. And then it has something very important here. I wish I could bring it up. It says health spending account. Health spending account is like on top of all this, and they give you cash every year. They give you cash. Mine is 850 every year. What that means is that. If there's anything they didn't cover, you can use it either to cover, maybe maybe I want to clean, my, maybe, I, maybe there's something I want to do, or you have an accident, and you want to buy this particular 
you have an accident, you want to buy this particular shoe or something to help you with your with the pain you have on your leg and it's not covered, you go into that cash that they provided for you, use it and pay for it. Do you know the funny thing is that this cash is called health spending account. Every year, if you don't use it, it goes, it's forfeited. So, you don't, it don't carry it over. If we have time next time, I'm going to explain how you can use it. I use mine up to the last dollar every year. How you can use it. Because it's there for you. The company gives it out. Some people have 1000 Some people have big amounts. So I have to stop here for, for lack of time. And um, I would have really liked us to pray, but maybe we'll do the prayer uh, some other time. But our apostle will take over. I want to thank God um, for today. I want to thank God for what we have shared. Um, time is never enough. Time is never enough, but I recall in Matthew uh, chapter 10, the disciples were asking Jesus and said, why do you always speak in parables? He told them, he said, he said, anyone that listens, more knowledge will be given to them. So I pray that a lot of things we talked about today might look like parables to you. It might not, you might not even understand it, but as long as you are here and you listen, I pray that Holy Spirit will minister to you and teach you more, teach you more, expand things you need to do. Begin to show you documents in your workplace that you didn't even know was there. Father, I thank you and we say take all the glory for in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen.